Okay, let's continue working on the Amoeba website here, and I'm going to start on the Superpower section. So you'll notice here that their powers have icons, so I think we should start by exporting those icons out. I've already gone ahead and exported three of them, so all I have left is Clortho here. And since those are opening up in Illustrator, I think it makes sense to save them as SVGs. So let's call them Power Clortho. So let's go to SVG. We want to put it in our image folder. All right. So I now have all of those power SVGs. They're right here. And we'll be able to use those now in our website. So looking at this in Photoshop, it looks to me like I have a word and then sort of a definition of that word or something, a description of that word maybe. So I think this would be appropriate to be in a DL, in a description list. So that's probably what I'm going to do. But I also have these, this H2 and this other paragraph. So I'm going to copy this and I'll put the, that text in first. So I'm going to start with my H2, which is superpowers. And I already copied the text from my paragraph. Okay. So I've got that text in there. Now I want to get the text for these things here. So I'm just going to copy that, go back to my editor, and I'm going to use a DL to put these in. So I feel like the words here should go in DTs, and the top words or the names of the amigos should go in DTs, and these descriptions should go in DDs. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so we're going to go DTs here. Uh, DT. And these are going to be DDs. OK, so there we go. We have our DTs and DDs. Now, of course, I want to wrap that whole thing in a DL. Let's give it a class of, let's say, iList for icon list case we ever want to use that style over again then it's not very, not super specific so we'll go like that and that's closing my DL there okay let's look in Chrome and see what that looks like cool so that's close to what we want we of course want the names to be uh, bold and they have underlines on them so that even means to me that I probably want those to be linked so let's go back in here and I'm going to put a link in all of these because I feel like they should have links. All right. There we go. So I've got links in all of those. That looks pretty good. Let's go look at in Chrome here. Cool. And I probably need a location to put the icon in. So the icon is going beside here. So I'm either going to put it inside of the inside of the DD or inside of the DT. Either one would probably work. I'm going to go with putting it inside of the DD. Let's go back here and I want to put the icons in the front of all of these DDs. So let's do that. And I'll probably use an I element for that. Class equals icon. Cool. And then I'm going to have to put a class on each of them so I know which, uh, which amoeba to actually display, which icon to display. So I'm going to prefix all those with I dash. So this will be I dash Gazora. And this will be I dash Zool. And so on. Oh, and you may notice that I forgot to actually close off these. I didn't put my closing tag on here. So I need my closing I tag. There we go. Okay. So that is probably the HTML I'm going to need to actually make this look the way I want it to. So let's go to Chrome and see what we get. It should look fairly pretty much exactly the same. Okay, so let's start styling this. So I want to start by styling iList. Um, so let's go in here and we'll go to the bottom and I'll target iList. 
And what are we gonna do? So we wanna uh, maybe get put nice margins on the top and the bottom to match everything else. Let's go 1.5M and zero. Let's get rid of the padding if there is any on there. All right, and then I wanna target the I list DT elements and I wanna make those bold. Okay, cool. And then I wanna make those links in there black. So I wanna target those ones specifically. I'll target I list A elements. So I want to do colon link and colon visited. And let's do our color of, well, I expect that's probably not actually black, but maybe it's just the lighter, the darker gray color. But we should probably check just to be sure. Oh, no, those ones are actually black. OK. How's that look in Chrome? That looks pretty good. Now, are those the same size? Yep, so those are 16 px also, so that's good. Okay, now, if we go back for a second and look at Illustrator at one of these superpower icons, I wanna know how big these icons are supposed to be. So I could check out my artboard here and see, uh, where's my artboard thingy? Oh, well, I'll just use the artboard tool because I know where that is. So these are 32 by 32, these graphics. Um, so what that means is that we need to create space on the side here enough to fit a 32 pixel graphic. So the space in here between the actual icon and the text, I'm going to guess that that's probably about 10 pixels because it would make sense to match this size, this side over here. So that means we need a total of 42 pixels of space here available for those icons. And the te technique I'm gonna use for this situation is I feel like it would be a good idea to just put 42 pixels of padding on the DL itself. And then we can absolutely position these icons back into that space so that they're sort of over top of the padding. So I'm gonna target my eye list here and I'm gonna put 42 PX of padding on the left. See how that looks, that looks pretty good. So the second line of the text here isn't indented properly, uh, or it isn't, it has indents on it. So we need to target our dot I list DDs and get rid of their margin and padding just in case, or just to get rid of that space. Okay, cool. And let's look back at Photoshop and you can see there's space underneath too. So when we're dealing with this margin and padding, we should probably put that space back in. Okay. There we go. So I think we're ready to put our icons in. So we have 42 px of space here available to us. Now I mentioned that I was going to use position absolute for the icons, and I want those positionings to be relative to the i list. So that means I need to put relative onto my i list so that I can position them properly. So those things are the dot icons. So we want them to have a width of 32 px and we want a height of 32 px and let's just put a background color on them so we can see where they are right now um, let's just go with red and then i want to do position absolute so those things i know for sure i want to do okay how does that look in chrome so there we go since we absolutely position them they're sort of hovering over top of the text right now we want to boot them over to the left hand side. So we want them to be right on the left hand side. So we'll just say left zero. And since they are inside of iList, they will then go to the left hand side of the iList element like that. And we just want to move them up a little bit. So I think let's use the margin top and let's say negative, let's try 1.5 M, see where that gets us. All right, that's pretty good. It's a little bit high. Let's go 1.2M. Cool, so there we go. They're positioned exactly at the top of the words and they're right in place for us. All we need to do now is just sort of put the icons on. And if we look back at my HTML here, you can see I gave a class to each of these so that they would have a different icon. They could have a different icon. But what I wanna do first is 
let's change this background property here so that we can inherit some, some values down onto the icons themselves. So I still want them to be transparent, but by default, I want them to not have a background image, but I do want them to not repeat, and I want their position to be left top like that. So all of them will have no repeat and left and top and transparent backgrounds. The only thing we're gonna change for each one is we're going to change the background image. So let's do Gazora first. Let's say background image. Or, uh, oh, we wanted the power one, right? Just like that. So let's look in Chrome. And there we go. So that's right in place. It's exactly the way we want. Okay, so let's just go and put the rest of these in. I'm just going to copy and paste this to make it easier on myself. All right, so there we go. So who do we have next? Zool. So we have all their icons in place now, and this is looking exactly how we wanted to do it. So just to go over how I did this again, is I used a DL, and I the names of the Amigos are in DTs, and their description is in the DDs. And you can see in the DDs, I put an I element for storing the icons, and I gave them all unique classes. And if we look back here, you can see I'm absolutely positioning the icon and I want it to move within the DL itself. But the DL here is this I list, so I gave it position relative. And I gave padding on the left of 42 pixels of the DL and that's just creating space for the icons. So the icons then, now that they're position absolute, I give them the left of zero and they'll go right to the left hand side of the DL and they'll go on top of that padded space that I created. I then gave them just a width and a height and move them up a little bit so they were in line with the name of the amoebas. And then because they all had different classes, all I did was give them different icons. And that gives us the effect we're looking for here for these, these superpowers.